Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. I recently published a brand new article on my website azamsharp.com titled Becoming an iOS Developer The Complete Guide 2023. And this is a pretty long article in which I talk about that what steps you can take to become an iOS developer and I want to go over this article although the link of the article is right there in the YouTube description so you can definitely read it. But let's go over it and talk about some of the stuff that is discussed in the article. The first thing is, do you need a computer science degree to become a software developer? The answer is no, you don't, all right? You don't really need a computer science degree to become a software developer. As an instructor, I've been teaching for five plus years and I have taught a lot of people, a lot of students who didn't really have any degree at all, let alone computer science. So they didn't, didn't really have any degree and now they're working successfully as a software developer. Now having said that, if you can afford a degree, and this is especially true if you are living in the United States and degrees are very important, the universities are very, uh, very uh, expensive. So if you can afford a university, then I would say go ahead and you can go to the university and uh, study over there. Just make sure that when you graduate, you don't have any debt, like no student loan, no nothing. You have to make sure of that, all right? Uh, because some people, sometimes they think that the only way to become a software developer is that if I spend eighty to hundred thousand dollars, that is completely wrong. Uh, this is misinformation to them. So make sure that you understand that you can become a software developer, not by uh, going after pursuing a very expensive degree, but just by you know just by reading books, attending boot camp, and we'll discuss some of those things. So degree is not really important in computer science. Now there might be some jobs that will require you to have a degree, like if you want to become an instructor or a professor at a particular school or large oil-based companies, non-technical companies. So there might be some requirement, but I think that particular pool of jobs are very small and the amount of jobs that you can apply without the degree is much larger. All right. What about coding boot camps? Now, keep in mind, I do teach at a coding boot camp. That's my full-time job. Uh, I actually like coding boot camps because instead of a four-year degree, you can do the coding boot camp in like four months or three months, depending on the style of the coding boot camp. And uh, you, instead of spending like hundred thousand dollar, you might spend ten, fifteen, twenty thousand uh, dollar. But the time, four years versus four months, is I think the main selling point. Um, coding boot camps are fast paced. All right, so it's not like oh, I'm enrolling coding bootcamp and now I'm going to become a software developer. It's not like that. You have to be current with all the assignments, all the homeworks, and it is very, very fast paced. So if you decide to go to a coding bootcamp, uh, just remember it is a lot of work, uh, but hard work do pays off. If you are willing to put in the time, put in the work, uh, then you will definitely learn a lot in a very small, short span of time. All right. What about free resources? I mean, you don't really want to attend a university. You don't really want to attend a coding boot camp. What about free resources? Now, there are tons and tons of free resources available for you. And I've linked to this article that you can read about it. Now, some of the resources mentioned in the article are free, some are not. So make sure that you understand that. What I have seen mainly is it's not about the quality of the resources that are available because some or most of the resources are very high quality. It's usually people just don't have that motivation and consistency, all right? When they're stuck on something, they usually just give up and then they move in a different direction. So in simple terms, they lack grit, meaning staying with the problems longer. And that is very, very important if you are trying to be a software developer because you will get stuck a lot of time. You just have to work your way through it, all right? So if you're one of those people who is very motivated, you have grit, you will persevere these kind of uh, barriers that you're gonna keep on hitting, then definitely you can go in and try out uh, reading books, reading online resources, uh, you know, less expensive uh, Udemy courses and a lot of different things. 
Now, one of the things uh, that scare newcomers is, oh, the programming language, it's so hard. Well, actually, the programming languages are very easy to learn. If you know one programming language, you can easily jump around into different programming languages. Uh, even when I'm teaching at a coding bootcamp, we start with Python, but immediately after a couple of weeks, we jump into JavaScript and it's a very smooth and easy transition because my students already know about conditions and functions and loops and all of those pillars, the building blocks of programming in Python so they can easily take that skills to any other language. It can be C Sharp, it can be JavaScript, it can be Java, Kotlin, Dart, Swift, Objective-C, you name it. So programming language is actually quite easy to learn. So don't ever be afraid of uh, learning programming languages. Now, if you're starting with iOS, then this might be the biggest question on your mind that should I start with Swift UI or UIKit? That is quite an interesting question. And my recommendation is you should spend 75% of your time learning Swift UI because that is the future and all the different pages and screens that are currently written, they are written in Swift UI. Even in the legacy project, I've asked a lot of developers and they're saying, yeah, well, most of our application is UIKit, but uh, all the new work is being done in Swift UI. And you should spend 25% learning UIKit. Now, why UIKit? Why 25%? because you still need to know a bit of UI kit so you can go back to the old or legacy code and change it or update it or maintain it. Now, it really depends where you're working, right? So if you're working for an organization where they are saying that we don't want to really want to use the UI right now, it's all 100% UI kit, then I would distribute my time 50% UI kit, 50% Swift UI on my own time. And uh, so it really depends on what kind of work that you're doing, what kind of a company that you're working. If you're working for a startup company where the, you're working on a greenfield project, meaning the project, not even a single line of code has been written, then uh, you should probably use Surf UI. If you are working for a very large organization and you're in the maintaining role, then you can uh, learn you know, UI kit. Uh, but if I had to start, I would probably say 75% Swift UI 25% UI kit, and I think that distribution will allow you to, you know, move forward in the future in the new direction, which is Swift UI, but also keep an eye on UI kit and you will be able to do maintenance tasks and you know fix some of the bugs. Source control. Very important. Uh, you will not be working as a solo individual developer if you are applying for those junior job, uh, junior roles. So definitely learn about source control. And this includes setting up a repository, GitHub, adding uh, changes to the staging, committing changes, pull requests, pushing changes, creating branches, and all those different things. Now, if you're a graphical or a visual person, you might be inclined towards using some sort of a Git graphical user interface, that is perfectly fine. Uh, there might be some people who are gonna tell you, hey, you need to use a terminal and that's the only way to do it, don't listen to them. Yes, terminal is awesome, you can use it, but just when you're starting out, just use the tool that you feel comfortable with. It might be terminal, but it might be a tower, it might be GitHub uh, a desktop application, it might be you know, any other visual tool that you want to use, you can use that. Even in Xcode, since you're building iOS application, that will be your primary or main editor. Xcode has a built-in support for GitHub also, so you can even use that. So what is the junior developer roadmap? Well, again, learn the Swift language. That's the starter. You have to learn the Swift language because every code that you're gonna write for creating iOS will be in Swift. I don't think you need to learn Objective-C anymore. It's been a while. So Objective-C uh, might be used in some places, but I think we have moved away from that. Uh, you should spend 75% time learning Swift UI, 25% on UI kit. Now, what happens after you learn uh, Swift language and you learn basics of Swift UI and the data flow and everything? Well, then my opinion, in my opinion, my recommendation is to learn about how to consume JSON. 
meaning how to consume an API that returns you JSON, get and post. And I think this is going to be the most important thing that you will learn because in every job that you will go, most of them will be using either a third party or they will be using some sort of an internal API. So definitely work on that, uh, like how to consume an API, how to consume a JSON API, get and post. And uh, I have put some list of different APIs. Obviously, this is not the complete list, but you can try these out to get comfortable with it. Now, for the rest of the things, these are more of a general advice. Programming is not an open heart surgery. Don't be afraid of programming. Don't be afraid of writing wrong code uh, for the first time. That's perfectly fine. Make it functional, then make it better. Make it functional, then make it better. Very important, okay? Microtask. Try to divide your task, whatever you're working on, into smaller tasks. So if you're building a login screen with a text box for a login and a text box for a password and a button, try to divide it out. Okay, I'm just going to put a text box for the username. That's it. That's your task. Write it down on a piece of paper. Cut it off. You mean strike through. You're done. I'm going to put a password on the screen. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to put a button on the screen. I'm done. What this will do to you is when you divide your task into smaller tasks then you will move a little bit faster. But apart from that, every time you strike through, you are completed with the task, it will give you confidence to move forward. All right. So this is a skill and it will take some time for you to generate, to develop, but definitely dividing the task, dividing the problems into smaller problems, that's very important. Use Google and Stack Overflow. Hey, there's no shame in using Google's Stack Overflow. I mean, senior developers, I mean, developers who have been working in the industry for 20 years, they still use that stuff. If you don't know the answer and you have uh, exhausted all of your resources, then go ahead and post it in a nice form formulated way on Google, and, uh, on Google, I mean, search on Google and post it on Stack Overflow. There's nothing wrong with that. Learn the debugging skills. So debugging, especially in web environment, I mean, obviously in all the environments, there are iOS developers also, but uh, I, I would say, uh, especially in web environment, debugging can be very, very helpful if you're using Google Chrome developer tools. But in iOS perspective, you should use Xcode to debug and learn debugging because this will definitely cut down, uh, you know, the amount of time you spend in finding and fixing the bugs. Whether you're using web application, or iOS application, doesn't matter. Debugging is extremely important, so make sure that you uh, learn how to do it. One of the best ways to learn is through the pet projects. Pet project means that you are just working on your own passion projects. Uh, and as soon as you learn the things like, oh, I learned core data, so you're gonna include core data in your pet project. Oh, I learned about how to do uh, take pictures. Okay, I can maybe add that into my pet project. And that's actually the best way to learn. So make sure that you have some sort of a pet project on the side, a passion project that you're working on daily as a small, at like maybe 45, one hour, um, 45 minutes to a one hour, just slowly you're moving forward. One of the best ways to stay up to date is by newsletters. So subscribe to the iOS newsletters or whichever technology you're learning. I have added a couple of newsletters over here, but this is obviously not the complete list. So make sure that you're doing that. Uh, another way to up, stay up to date is by is on Twitter. A lot of content creators, you will see that they're posting a lot of material on Twitter. So definitely follow these people on Twitter. They are all content creators. Uh, but apart from that, you will find a lot of other people also. If you just simply go ahead and search on Twitter for a hashtag, let's say iOS dev, or even Swift UI, so you will simply search for Swift UI, you will see a lot of different developers uh, posting, posting the stuff, so definitely follow them, all right? Use hashtags. Books, if you're just starting out, these are the recommendations for starting out with, uh, you know, with learning about uh, the Swift language and the Swift UI and UI kit and so on. So definitely start reading books, consume podcast also. I have a lot of podcasts that I listen to. These are one of my favorite podcasts, so definitely listen to podcasts. And then we talk about the portfolio, the GitHub profile, the user groups, a lot of stuff. So definitely read all of this stuff. 
very important that you take part or in the community, whether it is conferences or whether it is user groups. And the final thing is becoming an iOS developer or any kind of a developer, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So be the tortoise and not the rabbit. So just take small steps and you will see that if you start like spending one or two hours to sharpening your skills for iOS, eventually after a few months, few you know, six months or eight months, it's start, you know, start building up. It's all snowballing and uh, you will know you will know a lot more uh, than when you started, but you have to be consistent. All right, that's the important part. So I'll have a link to this particular article. So make sure that you read that. Hey, if you like this article, then check out the other YouTube videos. And in all of my YouTube videos, there's a thanks button right there at the bottom. So if you want to thanks, uh, donate some amount so I can drink some more coffee, you can do that, all right? And check out my courses on Udemy also. Thank you so much and hope you have enjoyed this video.